And we are back to discuss even more Game of Thrones news. This time we got an update that HBO is in early development to make another Game of Thrones spinoff on top of the one we're getting already with House of the Dragon and Daemon Targaryen, the Rogue Prince. How did, how did, I, I did see the headline for this and I'm wondering how did this happen when they had like five shows in production? They said that none of the five shows were Dunkin' Egg. And then, you know, they whittled things down, you know, with the long night that didn't happen. And then, you know, House of the Dragon goes forward. And then, then out of a sudden, out of nowhere, we're, we're, we're hearing about a Dunkin' Egg series. How, how did this happen? Well, I am wondering if this news is like HBO signaling that what they're seeing with House of the Dragon is mediocre and that Dunkin' Egg will be like a backup plan just in case they got another blood moon on their hands. Because if you'll remember, um, before House of the Dragon, we had another spinoff in development, Blood Moon, the White Walker prequel with Naomi Watts. And they supposedly made yeah. a, like one full-fledged episode, sent it to HBO, and they canceled it immediately after they saw it. So it, it's either HBO doesn't like what they're seeing for, for, Fire, for House of the Dragon and... Dunkin' Egg is just a safety net, just in case Fire and Blood yeah. doesn't, you know, or House of the Dragon. I keep saying Fire and Blood. Uh, House of the Dragon doesn't, you know, work out. I mean, it hasn't even started filming yet, right? I don't know. I don't know that either. I, I maybe I I don't know. May I think HBO ordered several episodes for House of the Dragon, so this is a train that they can't stop, even if they wanted to. But. My main hope here is that maybe we're going to get the thing I've always wanted, which is an anthology series. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, like, Dunkin' Egg, I mean, the only advantage of Dunkin' Egg is um, you you only really need two main cast, you know, to, to go forward. Um, and and, and that's, that's a lot less money than paying for a huge cast. So maybe, maybe they want a, a smaller, safer project. I don't know. Not to mention, uh, Dunkin' Egg takes place after the death of the dragons, yeah? Right, so there's no, there's no, big, uh, there's no big battles um, in Dunkin' Egg. There's uh, you know, no big expensive you know, epic battles. There's no CGI dragons. It's, um, it's essentially you know, a couple of tourneys you know, and, and, a, and a trial by combat, you know, right? So like Hedge Knight is a big tourney. Uh, Sworn Sword is a trial by combat in a river, and then uh, Mystery Knight is like a wedding tourney uh, situation. So, I mean, much smaller scale than like these epic battles. Uh, I'm sure they'll add in like Duncan Egg going on a few adventures here and there. Uh, what I really want is to explore more of Westeros. Like we've seen mm. bits and pieces here and there of like the Vale and the River. Well, no more Riverlands, but we've seen bits <laughs> and pieces. We're in there way too long. We've seen bits and pieces of the veil. Wait, We've are seen... you trying to tell me that you don't like seeing Arya wander around for for several seasons, just wandering? You saying that you you had enough of that? I I I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> no, but like we haven't really seen much of the Stormlands. We haven't really seen much of right. Dorn, kind of what like that one like couple yeah, of episodes. Yeah, no, it's true kinda. that we we didn't really see very much of of the Westerlands, the Vale, Dorn, or the Stormlands. Um, or even uh, some of the neck, like the swamp men from uh, from the neck. We didn't really see much of that area. No, kind of, no. maybe a little bit at at a Mo Kalen, but barely. You know, we saw a lot of the Iron Islands, and we saw a good chunk of Essos as well. But you know, they could add a few Dunkin' Egg tales, you know, to fill it out, and I'd be actually okay with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could just make yeah make up a few adventures here and there. It'd be pretty easy. Um, but uh, you know. Oh, by the way, at, as per usual, um, I always forget, like, we, we always have, you know, people who have never read the book. So, real quick, tell the audience who don't know uh, the tales of Duncan Egg. Uh, the tales of Duncan Egg. Duncan Egg is about a, a hedge knight uh, named Duncan the Tall who um, is, uh, is going around probably lying about being a knight um, and trying to find work. And he stumbles into... Uh, having to take on a squire and the squire happens to be the son of the king. Um, and so, the, the, and, you know, in the future, this son will be, uh, will be king too, though at the time he's, you know, he's, he's way down the line of succession. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not like that, 
But nonetheless, you know, Egg, Aegon, uh, has shaved his head and is, is a, um, and is acting as a squire for Duncan the Tall. And they, and they travel around having adventures. <laughs> um, and there, there's only three stories with them, um, though the fourth story's plot is fairly fleshed out. I, I have a video on it called The She-Wolves of, of Winterfell. Um, and so, you know, we have little whisperings of their further adventures, but we have three, three adventures of that for them, you know, the Hedge Knight, the Sworn Sword, and the Mystery Knight. I'm fairly familiar with the Tales of Duncan Egg, but I never knew there were, like, more stories beyond the first two in this series, because, like, outside the main A Song of Ice and Fire book series, I'm not really up to date on any of the spinoff stories. Plus, sometimes they're hard to find, like, you know, in bookstores, and it's like a whole thing. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, I can, I can, I can send you a PDF if you'd like. But the, oh, uh, gracias. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, they're fairly outside. With the Mystery Night is a little more connected, but the three stories are fairly outside of Ice and Fire, um, in, 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 you know, the events. Uh, and doesn't this take place like what a little over a hundred years before the start of the main, uh, the main series of books? Correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't like a very, 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 very young Walder Frey kind of show up? Yeah, a very young Walder Frey does show up. So it's actually less than a hundred years. I want to say it's it's maybe eighty years before eighty years before the events of of Ice and Fire. Um, okay. But after the death of dragons, so you know, after the dance and things like, and and after it importantly takes place um, after the Blackfire Rebellion. So the, the setting is a post-Blackfire Rebellion world. And, and that's actually a big part of, of the three stories, um, is, uh, is the kind of reconstruction period of the kingdom and, and what that looks like. Well, since you're familiar with most of the stories, um, how many seasons do you think we can get out of this? Oh, I mean... <laughs> You could, you could, if you went slow, you could do a whole season for each story, but really, re yeah, though, realistically, I think four episodes would, would, would suit a story pretty well. You know, they, you can go fast, you can go slow. They're, they're detailed stories. There's, there's a lot of characters. In my opinion, page for page, they're better than Ice and Fire. Like they're very good. They're very mm. good stories. Um, they're a little more straightforward. There, there's less scheming. Um, you know, uh, less descriptions of, of food, um, more traditional, <laughs> more traditional endings. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're very good stories. I, I, I like them a lot. Yeah. I have to wonder because we also got a report a while ago that HBO lost half of its adult audience after the Game of Thrones season eight finale. Oh, so I'm wondering, you know, I'm wondering if uh, they're trying to recoup that uh, those numbers because Game of Thrones, they did very, very well with Game of Thrones. I, I don't think very rare outside of sporting events, of course, yeah, very yeah. rare has television gotten as many people. I, I believe HBO did over 20 million consecutive viewers every week for Game of Thrones season eight. So and and what's what's the biggest finale in TV history that's not a sporting event like what MASH? Oh, right. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. MASH or Who Shot JR, the, the answer of Who Shot JR or something like that. But um, no, um, I'm actually somewhat excited for this. I, I, I still want the House of the Dragon because on the Game of Thrones podcast, which, by the way, we released it on Preston's channel. Go check it out. Um, we're now covering the Dance of the Dragons. And if there's a lot of drama, there's a lot of insanity. If, if uh, Mushroom is to be believed, which... I want that version of the story on the show. <laughs> I really like his version even, of the Even for HBO, they wouldn't have that much nudity. They wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> that's right, unfortunate. But no, um, Fire and Blood, uh, House of the Dragon, I can see that being at least you know one or two, maybe even three seasons if they went really slow. But I, I also want Dunk and Egg as well. And I don't want them to air concurrently like we have with The Walking yeah. Dead. Because The Walking Dead has, what, three Walking Dead series airing concurrently? Oh, God. You have the main, the main series, you have Fear the Walking Dead and Walking Dead World Beyond. And So, so um, at, by comparison, though, I, I would say that something that's kind of similar to, to Dunk and Egg is The Witcher in, you, in that you have The Witcher and you have his bard, right? You have two characters, essentially. And... Um, I mean, how much material did they chop down into their one season? 
I'm pretty sure from what I've seen, um, the the first season of The Witcher covers the first two books, I think. Yeah. I know it covers the first one, The Last Wish, but I'm pretty sure it also covers um, one of the other ones. I think oh, maybe okay. Sword of Destiny. I'll have to go back. It's It's been a minute since I've seen the thing. They do say that one of the weird things about The Witcher, and you, you don't really get it when you're watching it, is that um, many, many years happen between each episode, but it doesn't seem like many, many years because the characters haven't really aged, you know? That's the same problem Game of Thrones kind of had. Like, you yeah. didn't really know how many months passed between certain things, you know? Right, right, yeah. So, Like, in season one, you could kind of use Danny's pregnancy as, as kind of like a, a gauge as, as to mm -hmm. how long it's been. Because season, like, episode, season one, episode three, when Ned finally arrives in King's Landing versus season one episode seven or eight when he's in the in the in the dungeons of the red keep right, right. like it, it doesn't seem like that much time has passed but if you go back and use danny as like a gauge to see how much time has passed she has like a big belly by the time episode eight and right. nine comes around but, then, but so. then you know you've got these contradictions like gilly's baby that never seems to age but meanwhile right. meanwhile fat walda goes through an entire term you know and is able to birth a baby <laughs> You know, and all, all these, th you know, these time contradictions that make no sense, you know. Uh, but, well. uh, no, Duncan Egg, I'm excited for it. And hopefully we get a third one also in the works. And hopefully this all early development stuff is, is like an anthology series in the work. I would like to see uh, the full Dance of the Dragons. If they're going to do Dance of the Dragons, they need to do it complete. I don't want them to do an abridged version of this where they, like, skip a lot of stuff. And, uh, yeah, that would be, like, what, two seasons tops? two maybe three for being generous yeah i mean so. if if i guess if i were gonna do it i would do you know one 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 or two seasons for um the reign of viserys and and uh you know the the ex the adventures of daemon targaryen the rogue prince and Kristen cole and all those characters i do two seasons for that and then i would do two seasons of the actual dance um and then you know you have you know four seasons. That's how I would do it. That's a lot of like that's a lot of pandering. Like that's a lot of Aria washing bodies in the House of Black and White. No, no, there. but but with you know you could you could do a lot with you could expand um, the war and the stepstones and things like that. I just I just think that you need a little time to actually introduce these characters and 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 build up the the rivalries. You know, with you know. Rhaenyra's marriage to Laenor and Harwin Strong and her relationship with Kristen Cole and her, her relationship with Daemon Targaryen. You know, you need that kind of, uh, you need that time to let those characters build and, 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 and um, have those relationships build. So when there actually is a war, when you actually have Rhaenyra versus Alicent Hightower, you know, that that is finally like a release, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of people... You know, if you if you take for for instance like Cersei versus um, Marjorie and the final you know confrontation of blowing blowing Marjorie up in the in the in the Sept of Baelor, like would that have been as satisfying if Cersei and Marjorie's rivalry was one season? You know, the fact that it went, I got you. the fact that it went many seasons made that final like confrontation um, much more much more satisfying. Perhaps it was drawn drawn out too much i mean the faith of the seven plot went two seasons and you know they they sat in the party room as i called it you know and and and, and talked about nothing you know for two seasons mm, um, don't remind me <laughs>